So if you could share a story through your own art or film that you're making, what story would you want to share with the world? <laughs> so, well, a story regarding identity, identity and hobbies. Yeah, that's a great one. All right, everybody's thinking. Dog's experience, yeah. A story about living, that's a great one. <laughs> All right, so while everybody is typing in their question or their answer, a story, okay. yeah, that's a great one. So while everybody's typing in their uh, answers, I would like to introduce you to our first a guest speaker. Uh, we have Rosanna Peng here. Rosanna Peng is a filmmaker and artist. She has been working in the commercial videography uh, industry for nearly 10 years. And being a child of immigrants, her passion is to share marginalized stories in an empowering way. So welcome, Rosanna. Thank you, Lynn. Yay. I'm so Rosanna. All these ideas over here in the chat. I was going to say, what do you think of, of everybody's answers here? I think they're so beautiful. I think it's like really amazing to be able to focus in on like the nuances of like family dynamics and your own character and use that as a vehicle to kind of further your own, you know, personal growth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's so many great answers and it's still coming in. So yeah, you guys keep keep typing in those answers and um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll begin the interview here with Rosanna. So Rosanna, we know that you are a filmmaker and artist. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what your day-to-day -day job is like? Um, yeah. <laughs> go uh, ahead. Yeah, each day looks very, very different, um, I think with each week i'm kind of preparing for whatever project i have coming up so it could be a matter of like scheduling meetings with my different team members it could be you know planning for these shoots just being online maybe scouting uh grabbing equipment um but so yeah it, it really varies sometimes i'm editing the project when it's already shot it's a lot of just driving around um and every day looks a bit different wow uh, did you know that you were going to go into this profession as a teenager? I did. Luckily, um, I took an editing class in high school and I fell completely in love with editing. Growing up, I was such a shy girl and, you know, finding filmmaking and finding editing was something that I attached myself to because I felt like I found my voice. So I really couldn't imagine myself doing anything other than what I do now. It's amazing. Did you have to go to any uh, special type of school after um, high school in order to get this type of training in videography or editing? It really helps, but um, I went to a school in Canada uh, called Emily Carr University, and it was a design and art, fine art school. And I took graphic design. Um, it's pretty unrelated. It's related, but not directly related to what I'm doing now with filmmaking. But you know, at school, they really taught you how to think critically and be able to communicate ideas through art. So in that way, it definitely taught me a lot, but technically speaking, it didn't really teach me much about like how to use a camera or like how to edit. I was the one kind of just seeking that out and just learning with each project that I was kind of a self-assigning myself. <laughs> That's amazing. So you're a self-taught uh, artist then pretty much a self-taught creative yes 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 I love being self -taught. <laughs> what were some of your favorite tools as a teen or as a child um, that you grew up using all the time I loved um, being on Vimeo uh, Vimeo was such a great community um, now it is too but in the past I think it was my window into the world of what filmmaking could be um, in terms of its creativity, in terms of its, you know, level of style, I, the, yeah, I just really loved all these Vimeo videos and one day dreamed of just being able to make something so even remotely similar to it, I think would have been like a dream of mine. What were um, some of your first few projects like? Oh, wow. They were, like I said, self-assigned. So I would ask my friends who were getting married, I'm like, do you need a wedding video? And even back then, they, like no one really thought about video. They're like, sure, this this like young girl can come along with her video, her video camera um, and, and edit something together really quickly. So it was a lot of wedding videos and then a lot of um, 
videos for magazines, little interview videos. And, you know, I wasn't good at it at first. And it was really, really hard to keep on learning just because, um, you know, you have, I had ideas of what my videos, what I wanted my videos to look like, which was like this platform Vimeo. But then <laughs> what the skill actually was, was so different that I just had to learn with each project that I gave myself. How do you keep your competitive edge? Hmm. I like or, to say, yeah, I love that question. I do like to stay true to like what makes me unique as an artist. So I, I try actually not to tune into too much of like that competitive nature. Um, I think there's room for everybody, you know, to create and like have a point of view. So yeah, I think I love being competitive. I am very competitive, but I try not to like within the world of art and like filmmaking, I try not to tap in too much of that because it, it's exhausting. You know, there's a film about everything already. So anything, any film that I'm trying to make right now has already been made and that's okay because, you know, it's still unique through my point of view. That's amazing. Uh, what kind of uh, projects are you currently working on right now? I just came back from a trip, two week trip, um, shooting for, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not allowed to say this. I was shooting for Air Max Day for Nike and we shot in multiple locations. It was a really, really fun time. Um, and now that's being edited. I'm not the one editing it. Right now I'm also taking a screenwriting class so that I can, you know, write, a, a go more into like narrative filmmaking. And, you know, that, that's a whole different process too, right? It's like working with different brands versus like creating a story on your own has been really like challenging, but really, really fun too. Um, outside of that, I've been painting a lot and just trying to explore like having a blank canvas in front of you and, you know, exploring what I want to say with that too. Mm. How did you, um, when you got into this profession, how did you obtain these jobs? Uh, did you apply for any internships or was it just all networking? It was totally networking. Um, I think that goes a long way for anyone that's in, uh, like aspiring to be a filmmaker. Um, I worked first as an, at an agency and then I did my best at this agency. And I think once I left the agency to pursue freelancing, a lot of the people that I worked with um, recognized my skill throughout, throughout that um, period of time and helped me out on my own personal growth. And when I moved to LA from Toronto, I felt it was a lot easier because, you know, one person vouching for you in a room of people you don't know means that you're now exposed to these different people, despite even being in the room with them, right? So I think like your character and your work ethic goes a long way and that people can see you. Mm. Would you be able to share any of the work that you've created with our audience? Yes, today? I would love to. One second. Okay, can you see that? It's yep, just, right? mm -hmm. looks great. I hear the sound. Oh, our brows are pretty weird. I feel like it adds to our weirdness. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, no, no. One I can hear this. On my eyebrows is <laughs> eyebrows are confident. I can hear the sound. I can't see the video. All right, I'm just gonna do the small screen share. Okay. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> They're full. Soft. Mm, fierce. My worst eyebrow look was probably overdoing it with the pencil in high school. Whether it's glam, whether it's really weird, makeup could be abstract, makeup could be beautiful, snatched. There's no rules to makeup, so this is just how I like to do my brows. That was a fun one that I really like. 
watching. Nice. That's from Urban Decay. So for, for those of you that don't know, it's a very popular makeup brand. Totally. Yeah. And then here's another one that I like sharing. Let's see this one. My name is Sky. I skate and surf. When people say, like, I'm not good enough, you're a girl, I want to prove them wrong. I'm Zahara Juarez. I play soccer and I do track. My adrenaline is always pumping and I'm ready for anything that's going to happen. Style is expression. My name is Gianna and I'm a nine-year-old artist. You don't have to be like somebody else in order to be awesome. You're awesome already. Always be yourself. Style is power. And if this body is made of dust, may you return to the earth to come on with dirt. Oh, I, I love that one. That was, I, that was so cute. That was so good. So yeah, with those two projects, I think like you kind of get a sense of like what I enjoy shooting and capturing. I think mm -hmm. my main goal is to make the subject look as powerful as they can, despite whatever like differences they make. I'm better feel. when I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Do you, so you edit, when you edit um, all of this, you use, do you, do you choose the music and you cut and, and put everything together? Or do you have a team of people you work with? Um, so I actually got into it editing first. So I do know how to edit. And sometimes, you know, the project needs a different editor. So I give that off to somebody else. Um, or sometimes they need a director who can also shoot and I can do both. So yeah, it's, it really pays off to be flexible and it makes the job more fun too. Mm. Uh, where can, uh, if teens are interested in, in going into this type of community uh, or, or I guess creative community, where where can they, where do you think they could get started? I know you mentioned Vimeo, but are there anything, is there anything else or something that is like Honestly, an online community? Yeah, I think TikTok's doing really amazing things right now, which I'm sure the teens already know of, but I see so many tips from filmmakers, young filmmakers too. Um, that are just like really sharing the resources on TikTok. And I, th I find that really awesome because, you know, on Instagram, it's one, it's one platform that's really showcasing these highlights and these highlight reels, whereas like TikTok's really breaking it down to, you know, giving you more tips on to how to even get to the places that you want to be. Mm. I see a question here from Bess coming in. Um, she asked, is your ultimate goal to write and direct your own feature film? So yes, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um geez uh and and um if what type of, of editing software programs do you use i use premiere and that's a part of the adobe suite i love premiere a lot it's really really um you know intuitive and really fun to just play around with it's not fussy you can really like get in there and mess around with the windows and mess it up and it will still do the job so really recommend premiere Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite camera that you like to shoot with? Well, I have my old film camera that I bought on eBay and it's super eight millimeter. So it's just, it's just so easy to use. You place the film in there and you just start shooting. Um, I love using that camera for everything. It sh shoots in slow motion too. Um, so it, it's really fun to play with like that lo-fi kind of look while it still have it be slow motion and soft and really ethereal. Mm -hmm. Who is your biggest inspiration? Uh, this was a surprise question. Oh, sorry. Or let me <laughs> or, or let me ask you this. But what what you know what who inspired you or what led you down to this path besides that one class that you took yeah. in high school? Like you know, yeah. there's there has to be like some people around you that kind of keeps pushing you and to to keep going. <laughs> I think my family is definitely my biggest inspiration. I think that's a cliche answer, but I think everyone would probably agree. Like my grandma has been like a great source of inspiration too. It's like her drive and her willingness to just power through differences and like, you know, obstacles has been something that I just attached myself to. I feel like supported enough by them, but also um, inspired and motivated by them to just keep on going. Mm. What are the, what are some of your biggest 
challenges being a filmmaker and uh, or artist? And then what are some of the rewards? Yeah, um, you know, I think a lot of my challenges are similar to those awards um, being being in the profession that I am in. Like I mentioned before, like growing up as a shy person, it really took a lot of growth emotionally to be able to walk into a set with people you just met for the first time and start telling people what to do, right? Um, and some instances is not like that exactly, but um, you know, the, one of the biggest challenges is being able to like walk into a room and like have to learn, relearn how to work with a team, relearn, you know, the project's needs. Um, but that's also one of the most rewarding things too, because that's where a lot of the magic happens. You know, you don't have the same experiences as anyone else. And it's really humbling to know that you can walk into a room and just be able to collaborate on something despite those differences. And we have a question coming in from uh, Lydia here. It says, how do you overcome the shyness? Well, I'm still working on that, Lydia. <laughs> But <laughs> you just look people in the eye and don't look away. It's like how animals do it too. But um, I think overcoming it has taken a lot of, you know, being, being comfortable with getting uncomfortable, right? It's continuing those conversations. It's more so like focusing your, your attention, not on yourself, not on how like stupid you may feel by talking about yourself, but focusing on that other person focusing on like being curious and present in that, in whatever conversations you have. And that can be, you know, on set, at work, at school, um, at the bus stop, you know, it's just being present with where you are and being okay with that. And then now focusing your attention on like, who's this person? Like, tell me more about this person. Just being genuinely curious. Mm. Do you have any tips for, um, for teens that want to get started in uh, creating a, a project in art, in filmmaking or wanting to get into this profession? Yes, 100% is to just start doing it. It's start shooting on your iPhone. It's start shooting on whatever camera, you know, your parents may have lying around. I think it's really important to just get in there and get started on whatever project you think um, could be worth a weekend shooting at. Um, I think, you know, because you may feel more creative and like you may feel like you could never achieve these videos that you like really love and idolize, you're even further away if you don't start. So I think like one of the most, the biggest things that I always recommend people is to just get started. That's a great advice. What are some important uh, attributes or skills uh, that you feel would be necessary for anyone interested in becoming a filmmaker? Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely flexibility. So like I said, I started out editing and then I started to shoot my, my own stuff. And then I started to direct my stuff. And then, but I'm still editing on like the projects that I'm directing to. And, you know, I think with the, with the scene and landscape of filmmaking just changing because of the different platforms, right? It's important to be able to be flexible um, throughout those changes because it makes you like a better filmmaker, better artist and can get you the jobs that you want. Um, so I think it's, it's a great attribute to just be humble and still be flexible with whatever projects that come your way. I agree, I agree. Um, well, Lauren here, oh yes. Uh, so Lauren here, <laughs> thank you, Lauren. She included some information on uh, an event that's going to be taking place called Let's Make Movies Free Online Filmmaking Workshop for Kids and Teens. So be sure to check that out. And then just so everybody knows, we do have the Teen Film Festival coming up again this year. It's going to be starting in June. So uh, don't forget to apply for that. There are a lot of amazing prizes uh, for, for creative filmmakers like yourself. Um, thank you for that. And then, and then, uh, has do you, can, could, would you be able to tell us has this pandemic affected your job in any way? Yeah, I haven't had much shoots last year. Right now, they're picking up, and you know, I think it's the balance of doing it safely while still getting the job done. I think a lot of shoots have been, you know, just allocating the budgets to be um, to to offer rapid testing available before each shoot or getting the crew to get tested beforehand. Yeah, so it, it looks a little different, but um, I think we can make it work, you know. Are there any resources uh, or web favorite web websites or magazines that you use every day that you can recommend to our teams? 
Um, I want to say TikTok, but I know <laughs> you probably get a lot of dancing videos too. So it's not a resource, but it's just, it's just staying aware, like going online, scouring, you know, photography books. I love being able to be multidisciplinary in like where you find inspiration. It doesn't always have to be films that you're inspired by. It could be books. It could be, um, you know, paintings, going to art shows, just being diverse really helps you um, when you're telling your own story. Mm. If you could turn back time to, let's say, your 16-year-old self or your 18-year-old self, what is one thing that you would tell yourself? Your acne will go away. <laughs> <laughs> but um, your acne will go away and you will, it will be better. Like, I think, like, looking back, you know, the struggles made it all worth it. It made you, like, a stronger person, made your, like, skin a bit thicker. So um, just to hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh what do you do for self-care i really love running which is where we met lynn um <laughs> and i love painting um i have a lot of hobbies i'm learning how to surf i'm learning like um how to screen write it's just like hobby land when i'm not working <laughs> <laughs> And then um, I, I know we, we talked a little bit on art and, you know, you and your painting. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what Art and Friends is? Yeah. So Art and Friends was an initiative that started during the pandemic. Um, because all my shoots got canceled last year, I really had a lot of time to just reflect on what I wanted to focus on. And I wanted to work more with, with my hands. That was one of my goals last year. And so I took some painting classes and I just wanted to create a community around that. So Art and Friends is a uh, virtual event that basically we do figure drawing. We do virtual figure drawing and we raise money for nonprofit organizations that we believe in. So it's been a really fun experience to just kind of challenge ourselves in like managing an event, like what, what goes into that. And even though it's Zoom, there's it's really forgiving because it's Zoom, but also just the logistics of everything has been really interesting to learn, but also to be able to create a space for people just to try out art has been really rewarding, you know, because it's just fun to like be able to give that to somebody else. I know I love learning something for the first time. So for to give that to somebody else has been like a really rewarding part of Art and Friends. Yes. And you can and any for anybody here that's interested, you can find them on Instagram if you look under art and friends <laughs> we'll link that in the chat box uh rosanna do you have any last words that you'd like to tell everybody here today uh i love all your film ideas and would i would love to see them created so you got really special stories and i'm sure that only you can tell so i think you know if you're interested in filmmaking i really uh i really encourage you guys to try it out and you know what better way than this teenage the teen um the teen film contest <laughs> thank you thank you thank you rosanna um so for everybody here if you have questions please do it in you know please don't be shy you could just ask us questions in the chat box and we could ask that question later for you during the q a and i'll turn it over to jessica thank you thanks, rosanna Anna. Thanks, Rosanna. That was really wonderful to hear from you. And just a quick reminder that we have a survey that we like you guys to fill out for us, and we'll share that in just a few minutes. Um, Rabbit, are you there? What's up? Oh, all right. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Let me first introduce you. So for everyone here, Rabbit is a Haitian American artist and designer. Throughout his career, he has experimented in mediums, including furniture, game design, web apps, and products. His passion is to find ways to bring art into underserved communities. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your stories with us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so tell us more. All I know is that you're an artist and designer, and I've seen a little bit of your work um, on your Instagram account, but tell us what mediums do you um, work in? What is your um, current, what are your current jobs, I guess? Uh, currently I'm just doing like oil paintings, um, mm -hmm. portraitures. Um, I'm working in web development, doing a lot of like graphic design. Um, and that's, that's just the main for right now. Um, but I do have like a lot in the past, any, any medium that I can get into, I'm interested in. And so you, you're, you're your own business. Like you combine art and 
business, which is something that I think a lot of people who go in, who are artists don't necessarily think about um, when they're wanting to pursue that as a career. So how does that work for you? How much of your time do you have to devote to, to each of those aspects? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's different um, every day because, you know, one day you're doing mostly like emails, you're doing admin work, you're running around doing the bills. And one day you're devoting most of your day towards creating. So it's 50, 50. Okay. And let's just jump back. So when you were a, a teenager yourself, were you already pursuing art in various ways? If so, what was that? And then did you see yourself, did you think, oh, I want to be an artist. Like I want to make money doing this. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was doing art pretty much every day. I enjoyed it. Um, I was pretty much uh, uh, having like a lot of bad time in school. And a lot of like my teachers pulled me to the side. They had like a sort of intervention in ninth grade for me. Um, it was crazy because it was like my history teacher, my security guard, uh, my art teacher. They all got me together. And I was like, wow, this is serious. And they were like, you need to focus on your art and you know stop playing around and you know when when that happened that was like the aha moment for me that these people actually cared about my future and wanted me to pursue that and that's when i sort of started taking it more seriously okay so ninth grade and having a team of people who really cared and what kind of art at that time were you you, you mentioned you were in an art class already had you like come to art on your own as a child or um and then what kinds of art were you doing at that time uh, I mean, back then I wasn't really like focused on art. I was just drawing every day. I was just kind of okay. like that, that kid that knew how to draw. I drew like a lot of Dragon Ball Z characters, like anything I would see like on cartoons. Um, and, you know, I was just taking like art one in class, like anything that was that was available to me. And so from that point on in time in high school, did that keep you motivated through? You're obviously successful today. So how did that like change your journey? Oh yeah, I mean, af after having that intervention, like my art teacher just kind of started creating art classes for me and kind of just kept me in the program for the four years I was in school. That's awesome. So after high school, what happened? Did you pursue uh, higher education? Yeah, so I went to Art Institute for um, in Philadelphia. So I went for media arts and animation, which is totally different than what I'm doing right now. But uh, it allowed me to like learn everything in art. So we had figure drawing, we had 2D animation classes, we had 3D animation classes, uh, you know, we had color theory. Uh, if we wanted to do watercoloring classes, do sculpting, we were able to go through everything. And I think that's why now it's allowed me to be more interested in doing uh, different mediums. So, so during that time, were you also pursuing as a hobby your own art or like doing canvas work or did that just come after school when you had more time? I was actually, at that point, I was really, I really wanted to work at Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I wanted to work at Disney. Um, I wanted to make cartoons, but at the time it was just very tedious work mm -hmm. um, doing traditional cartoons and the industry was changing. So um, I just went back into like illustration. Oh, wow. Um, I meant, wanted to ask when you were at the Art Institute, did you do internships? Oh yeah, I mm -hmm. worked at um, a company that did production for Nickelodeon. Okay. So I was going to New York from Philadelphia to New York like three times a week on the bus. And we were, I was like an in-between person. So what I would do was draw all the in-between frames for the animations. Uh, from all the main animators and get them in an envelope and deliver them to a different office in New York. So I was pretty much doing like a lot of like the stuff you see that, that they do on TV. Like when you, when you see them delivering coffee and stuff like that, that was, that was me pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> the grunt work. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was fun. It was, it was great to experience like that and, and kind of like feeling like, you know, you were working full time sort of, but you weren't. <laughs> right. And what was the trend? Okay, so I have a few friends who went to art school and, you know, get, while you're in art school, you have this time to pursue art in various forms. And then of course, after graduation, it's the real world and you're, you're describing how you kind of wanted to shift gears after that. So how, what was that transition like for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, after doing that, I kind of like shifted into what was available for me at the time. So I was doing a lot of like interactive websites 
um, I was working with this program called Flash and making like the, the coding for that. Um, but Flash since kind of like, you know, I think once when, when you're working in that sort of field, everything just over time, um, you know, maybe gets evolved or there's a new language or there's a new tool being used. So during that time I was evolving with the stuff. Uh, so I moved from doing interactive web development to web design into graphic design. So like a lot of like work that was available to me at the time. Okay. And these were all um, independent projects or were you, you weren't working for one company? Yeah, I was working for like uh, different companies at the time. So I wasn't working on any projects at the moment. Okay. So I guess what, for an artist, you know, you, what, what is your favorite project like what has been your favorite type of project to work on uh <clears throat> some of my favorite projects is um uh, like my personal ones that i've been working on right now uh is like a body of work that i've been doing just getting friends together get them come in do uh porches of them uh maybe i can sh sh share my screen yeah please yeah, let me see if i can share screen I'm not sure if everybody can see that. Yeah, I think we can. Okay, so uh, what I do is I, I get like a lot of my friends to come in and we do like sit-ins and do uh, porches of them. And I kind of like collaborate with them on the fabric that they want, uh, kind of like jewelry that I could attach to them, what kind of a uh, medium that I can make them with. Most of these are oil paintings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just kind of go from there. And then we kind of go back and forth on um, you know, is this all right? Like, is this fabric okay? Is this cut right? Does this uh, represent you correctly? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's uh, working with, uh, I would consider myself like a, a child of an immigrant. And for me growing up, it was very much figuring out how to move in America as a child of an immigrant because we have like things that we do a certain way so like a lot of stuff that was black culture considered i didn't really know black music growing up because i was so i was a haitian child you know i, I learned like a lot of the music that um you know my parents listened to so I, I grew up trying to figure out how to still be american mm -hmm. and also how to still have my culture so like what i try to show in a lot of these paintings is you know people have like their own american identity but also they have a little background of themselves and still kind of like showing like their style. Mm -hmm. um, and this is like another one right here. Uh, Cafe Bustello, this is like a fav one of my favorite coffees that my mother always drank. Um, and like I've always grew up on having up until now. Uh, so just decide like, let me just create a person in this sort of like uh, material as well. Just to clarify, is the artwork, is it 100% oil or are we seeing, is that like a multi mixed medium? Yeah, this one's a mixed medium uh, Okay. where the Cafe Bustello, those are wrappers from the coffee cans. That's really cool. Yeah, I've, I've, I, anytime I get these cans, I pretty much use like, I recycle them for my brushes. I recycle them for flowers, like whatever. They're always like around my crib. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I have all these just laying around and I just decided like, let me just use these wrappers. <laughs> cool. And on the previous portrait, was that actually um, fabric as well? Yeah, this one's Oh, fabric. cool. Yeah. Wow. On both the jacket and the rabbit. Yeah, so you can see uh, it's a rabbit's foot there. Mm -hmm, there's, rabbit's the jacket, foot. there's buttons on there and there's also like a uh, the metal, metal chain, yeah. That's really cool. Um, and this one as well is a uh, medium as well. Um, wow. <clears throat> It's beautiful. And then I have this one right here, which is, I decided for this one was like a little bit different where I actually use the fabric as a background mm -hmm. instead of putting it as the cloth on her. Uh, so like her cloth, you might see the straps where, um, you know, it's shown through instead of actually on top of her. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I like to do right now is like experiment with um, all these different type of mediums with you know, like my friends, and it kind of helps out with being able to uh, kind of still have like that communication with people now, especially that's important in the pandemic, is being able to collaborate. 
Are, and are these portraits you've done during the pandemic? Yeah, most of them are. Okay. And so with portraits like this, do you, they're all really beautiful. And then do you um, show the, would you ideally show these in a gallery or do you try to sell them? What, what's your ultimate, is there a goal with them? They seem really beautiful. Yeah, currently there, there is no real goal with them. I, I mean, I love like creating these pieces. I have a collection of them just trying to like build up my archive for mm -hmm. galleries, um, maybe my own solo show, but currently there's no, plans to sell them. God, yeah, I mean, it'd be like selling your friends, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are any of your friends like, oh, I would love to have this? Um, do you ever do a portrait for someone? Yeah, I mean, I, I do some commissions um, mm -hmm. for, for friends, uh, which is kind of, I've been like, what's kind of like been my job since the pandemic happened. It's just been like, oh, okay, like someone wants a quick portrait. Okay. Um, so do you have any recommendations for budding artists out there? How, you know, what, what is, um, what would you recommend to them? Like, can they make a living as an artist? And if so, what should they be focused on? Uh, can you make a living as an artist? <laughs> I, I, it looks like you can, I, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a, it's definitely like a, a struggle finding yourself and figuring out you know, what you want to do. Um, there's some challenges like for, you know, the beginning of my career, you know, I've been going through working these different various jobs and being like, I want to do this, I want to do that. But it was like following money as I was like younger. I think as you get older, you kind of find yourself and you know exactly what you've always wanted to do and you're more confident in it. In it. And I think that's a, the biggest thing is as long as you're confident in what you want to do and you go hard at it, then, you know, that's, that's a guaranteed success. Thank you. And similar to what Lynn uh, talked to Rosanna about, do you have any websites or resources that teens would be, um, find useful for pursuing a career in the arts? Uh, my favorite resource was, uh, and is still always books which you can get from your public librarians. Wink. Books, what are those? <laughs> books, what are those? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, you can. You can still get books from the library. You can still get books from the library. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to say TikTok. Okay. Right? It's a mix. It's a balance. We yeah, need I mean, both. <laughs> I, I mean, what I do is I go to uh, Goodwill. I go to Dollar Tree. I go to thrift stores. You know, I find like books under five bucks. Um, and they just like kind of like sit around my crib for like inspiration and I just kind of go through them like you don't have to read them, you know, um, but I use those I into manga a lot um, animes. Um, any sort of like film mediums I'm into like I use those as like inspiration for art. Okay, and a bigger question in general, how do you define success in your life. Uh, I think success is just being confident in yourself. Um, as long as you know what you want to do and um, you're not altering yourself for, you know, where the market is trending or, you know, what's popular. I think as long as you know yourself and that makes you happy, then that's success. Thank you. What is something that you would want people to remember you for, whether as an artist or just as a person? Uh, I think I would want people to remember me as um just a great person you know i was like always there for people <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah oh um and i know that we, we want always want to know like what you do outside of your career to stay healthy to stay well mentally physically um disclosure again i know that you're in lynn's run club so i'm sure running's a part of that but <laughs> tell her elaborate <laughs> yes uh i get uh run challenges from rosanna which i've been ignoring um <laughs> that's like one thing I've, I've i've done here and there but i think since the pandemics began um i've been doing like a lot of biking pick up a bike it's a lot easier to be on the street on a bike um been doing like a lot of park hangs um, a lot of beach hangs stuff like that uh facetime my friends uh just finding uh new things to get into mm -hmm. Oh, I wanted to ask too, has the pandemic, obviously you've been doing some work, I mean, you've been doing work during the pandemic, but um, has it, how has it influenced your work and your just sense of creativity? Yeah, 
I mean, I think when things were, were open, there was just a sense of like, you have to put out as much as possible and you have to keep working. And it took a lot of toll on your mental health. And I think in the beginning of the pandemic, for me, it was just trying to figure out how to control things. And I wasn't able to control it. So after a while, it took me a while to just let go and mm-hmm. understand that, hey, like, this is the time to reset and just, you know, feel like all my emotions. If I want to work, I'll work on my time. If I don't, then uh, um, I could be fat and have my chips and stuff like that <laughs> one day and watch my Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good way to adapt, to be able to adapt to the situation. Yeah. And if you could go back in time, tell your 18 year old self or give your 18 year old self some advice, what would that be? Uh, just be you and be confident in yourself. Great advice. Well, thank you so much, Rabbit, for sharing your story. And um, I haven't been looking at the chat, so I don't know if there are any questions, but this is the time for anybody here to ask Rosanna and Rabbit their questions. Um, I will share the Lynn, I don't know if you shared the link, but I'll share it I, in a second. Oh, yeah, I did, but you can share it again. Um, okay. Yeah, if you guys get a chance, please do fill out the survey for us. Um, it would definitely help us out a lot. And then um, I have a question here for Robin and Rosanna. How did you guys um, meet, and how did you start working together on projects? <laughs> Front club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we met through, yeah, Run Club, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think we've always, um, no, I, th- I think we've met, like, really, like, started actually working together in the, in the summer during a pandemic when Rosanna was hosting Art and Friends. You know, she was doing these weekly, you know, virtual figure drawing classes, and I hopped in, and we really gotten really close to her when she was like, hey, you want to kind of, like, help me out with this and be a part of this? And the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> yeah, awesome. lovely having Rabbit kind of co-host the events with me. Awesome. We have a question here coming in. Uh, Camille asked, at what point did you guys develop your unique style or is it always changing? Uh, we'll start off with you, Rosanna. One more time. Oh, at what point did you start developing your own unique style and is it always changing? Yes, it's totally always changing. Um, I think initially I was just drawn to more fashion films, more edgy, um, kind of high contrast fashion films. And I wanted to recreate that with what I was, what my work entailed. But then, you know, it's not always the same content. Like I'm not always going to be shooting like high fashion shoots, right? So it's kind of incorporating that and breaking it down. Be like, okay, why do I like this film? I think I like things with like, you know, juxtaposition. I like things that are typically tough to be presented softly. So in that way, it's just kind of taking that, isolating that, and kind of applying that same style onto different different works that I have. Mm-hmm. How about for you, Rabbit? Um, when did you develop your unique style? And is it always changing? Yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> I think part of, part of it was always there, but a lot of it was foundational work. Um, you know, I remember like going back to like uh, Rosanna's figure drawing classes in the beginning. She was like, oh, can you teach figure drawing? I was like, I don't remember any of the structures I learned in college, but you know, like as you're learning it, as much as you repeat like, oh, you're working on lines or you're working on form, you know, as much as you repeat it over time, you start adding in like a little bit of something that becomes yours. And then you start forgetting how you came up with this style. So I think that's what it became for me is, is like actually knowing the stuff in the back of my head and just adding on over time. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, we have a question here for Rosanna from Bess. Uh, careers don't always run smoothly. How have you overcome mistakes or failures? I've had a lot of mistakes and a lot of failures. I've shown up to shoots and forgotten my whole camera. <laughs> so that's just like, you know, beginners, I think it's just like a, it's a learning curve, right? You're trying to learn something or you want to be really good at it. You're bound to make mistakes. You know, I've recorded videos and interviews and I forgot to press the record button for the audio. So I had to take it from the camera sound and just sound awful. Um, So overcoming those mistakes have been so pivotal because I've wanted to just quit everything. 
go back to my parents' house and just choose a new career after those mistakes. But I've never made those mistakes again, right? I think they're complete learning experiences. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna go to a shoot without my camera. I'm always gonna record audio when I'm doing an interview. That's all you need. <laughs> awesome. How about for you, Rabbit? Do you ever face any failures in your job or how do you overcome uh, mistakes? All the time still. Um, and I, th I think what I've learned over time is failures are great experiences. They're, you know, like exactly like Rosanna says, like you'll learn not to make those mistakes again. And I think a little bit with art too is sometimes it's a little bit forgiving because, you know, you can make a mistake, but then you can just draw over it and pretend like it wasn't a mistake. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> it makes your work better. And sometimes you just have to throw it away and start you. But I think as long as you keep that in mind is that like you're, you're learning from it. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. What are um, some, do you have any pro upcoming projects, Rabbit, that you're working on? Uh, currently, I have an art show coming up. Uh, it just keeps getting pushed back because of COVID. Um, initially, it was for February for Black History Month. It got pushed to April. It might be June, but it's supposed to be, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say it, but like it's, it's an experience with a brand, with a car, and there'll be cars and art displayed and performances, but I'll post it up when you know, that's, that's coming up. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do, okay, here's a question from Margarita. Hey, Margarita, do you have any advice for people who might feel hesitant to go into filmmaking, filmmaking considerably, considering how relatively hard that industry is to break into? Rosanna? I think any industry seems hard to get into when you're viewing it from the outside. I think if you know one person who's down to you know, do a test project with you, that's already you making your way into the industry. So like I said, my biggest word of advice for anyone interested is just to get started because it really does feel intimidating and I've been there before, right? But you know, one project leads to another, leads to another, and then all of a sudden you're looking back and you're in the industry. <laughs> mm. I, I don't know if I, if I asked you this earlier, but did you ever do any internships, Rosanna, when you were in college? Uh, I did. I worked at a magazine and I was shooting all their video content. Oh, that's awesome. And when you when you guys applied for like internships, how was it? Did you go through uh, like a, a like a career center at your college or were the, was it different people that you spoke to or friends? It could be fun. Um, yeah, I found that program through just online. It was like an online posting from someone that I followed that posted it. What, what resource did you use, Rabbit, for your uh, internships? What was the question? What resources did you use to get your internships? Um, I mean, at my college, we had a career advisor. So pretty much uh, they would have postings like on the school website. Uh, but I think it was actually going in and meeting up with those advisors and actually showing them like you really wanted those positions. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we have a question here from Ed. Uh, Ed asks for both Rosanna and Rabbit, was there a particular project growing up that influenced you to become a filmmaker uh, and artist? So this could be, we'll start off with Rosanna. Um, I guess the biggest motivation was just to make the project that I, that I'm going to do better than the project that I had prior so I just kept on like sharpening like what I wanted to focus on started learning more as I went and made mistakes so all those mistakes really paid off and really helped at the end. Mm -hmm. How about for you Rabbit? A uh, project that influenced me to become an artist? Um, like I would, I would always go back to Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I go back to that and then like one of my influencers uh, was Chuck Jones he kind of created like the style of you know, old cartoons like Looney Tunes. Uh, mm. So, you know, I follow like a lot of his work and that just really kind of like made me want to like copy his style a lot and, and do that. <laughs> awesome. I, I have a question for you both. So Rosanna and Rabbit, obviously you, you both mentioned that you're not from Los Angeles. Uh, you, you're from Canada, you're from, you know, Philadelphia. How, 
how did you just pick up and leave and, and move to different areas of the US? And how was it for you, Rosanna? Um, it was interesting. I, my first big move was from Vancouver to Toronto and that was a really shocking move. Um, and that really taught me a lot about myself. Growing up, I really thought LA was the Mecca of filmmaking and Mecca of you know, entertainment that I had to be here. Um, and I think like, since the industry has been changing so much, you really could do what I do anywhere and be, um, you know, be good at it. So although I moved here for that intent, like I would not like to leave LA without giving back to it in some degree. So it's been like one of my goals to like, you know, create art and friends to be able to give back in some small scale. It's been like a really fun journey, you know, exploring LA, exploring the US. Um, because I think there is so much beauty despite, you know, a lot of things. Um, yeah. So does this mean you're going back to Canada? <laughs> uh, <I don't> know. <laughs> we, we shall see. We'll see. We'll see. How about for you, Rabbit? What was it like for you to just pick up and move away from home? Uh, I think growing up, I was a very big Lakers Kobe fan. Um, I was into Disney a lot. So for me, like, I always knew, like, I was ready for this warm weather, like, and I just was like, kind of like going through, like, how can I leave my parents' house and how can I make the move? So I think when I was looking for internships, I got an internship at Disney, but it was in Florida. And my career advisor was like, you're not gonna work there because they're just gonna make you work at the theme parks. You're not gonna do any animation. So that got nitten, but, but I was still set on just going out here. And I think once I graduated, I saved up a couple years got my tax refunds and was like, you know what? I'm moving to LA and I, I made the move, didn't have a job. And literally like on my first day coming out here, I had an interview and was like, hey, come in the week after, you know, I was working and that was it for me. That's awesome, so brave. Yeah. <laughs> so courageous. Follow your dreams, guys. <laughs> Follow your dreams. Wow. So. I'm just, you know, I, I feel like a lot of times, like, you know, you get parents, uh, and I, I'll be honest, I heard this growing up when I was a kid, because as a kid, I loved drawing, and they would always say, oh, well, you don't want to go into to becoming an artist, you're not going to make any money, or what, or you have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer, so, you know, did you ever hear that as a child growing up, Rabbit, or Rosanna? Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> definitely as a child, but my, my parents, you know, like, they, they were in a great position to, to move here from Haiti and kind of like make a living for us. They never wanted us to worry about things. So, you know, they always supported like my art, but you know, they were always throwing like a, you would make a good lawyer one day because I always argued with them. But like, you know, I, I think parents do that. They kind of like put in like those little subtle hints, you know, they would buy like a lot of art supplies for me. They would put me in piano lessons. Like they were really big into the arts. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with fearing the unknown. They're worried about it because they don't know anybody who's a successful artist. They know successful doctors um, and dentists that make a lot of money, and they know that for a fact. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd say it's somewhat of the same experience. It, my parents are so supportive. They second guess me being freelance, though. I think that's a thing that gets them upset or gets them like more cautious. They're like, why don't you just stay at an agency and you can be on payroll? Um, but I think, you know, you, that's exactly why like Rabbit and I are in this field that we're in and why we're here in this chat. Cause we do want to just expose that and normalize, you know, that a career doesn't have to be completely linear, you know? That's awesome. Wonderful advice. Thank you for sharing that. Do we have any other questions from the audience members? You guys are, you know, you're here to learn and we have our experts here to help. So please, please do take a moment to submit your questions. Don't be shy. Or if you want to unmute yourself, you are more than welcome to. And if you haven't done so already, we, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to link in the, the, uh, the, <laughs> the survey again. So you can go ahead and fill that out. All right. Well, um, do you guys have any last words, anything else that you want to leave our audience members with? Words of advice. 
I'll start off oh, with I you. Saw, I, saw, I saw someone that had like an Attack on Titans uh, avatar over there. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I do, I do want to see like if anybody has work, I do want to see like some of their stuff. I'll give good advice or yeah. you know, give you constructive criticism. Uh, oh, free. that's awesome. If anybody here has, if they want to contact you, what's the best way for them to contact you both? Are they able to contact you through your Instagram or do you have your website you can share? Uh, yeah, I mean, my website's rabbit.world. Um, you can email me info at rabbit.world or just on my Instagram, Johnny Rabbit, no H. Mm -hmm. There you guys go. Look at that. And so everybody that's here, Rosanna and Rabbit, you know, they're happy to, to connect with you guys and you know, feel free to share your work. I, I think I think this type of industry, it's really important for us to to um, help each other out and network as much as possible. And when you're able to share advice, that's where growth happens. And then if there's a project that you're interested in working on, you know, definitely reach out to them. Yeah. Anything anything else, Jessica? Wonderful. Wow. I would say I would, I would say also like work with your friends. Mm -hmm. you know friends are, are great you know like you have a network of people right now it gets a little bit tougher when you get older because you know older you're you're married and stuff like that but when you're younger you know you have so many people around you um they're great inspiration you know try to collaborate with them as much as possible and uh just inspire each other and push each other to grow yeah thank you and look guys Ro rosanna attached the um art and friends co um that's where you can, yeah. yeah. It's wrong, it's wrong. Oh, JK, JK. <laughs> one, oh, there it. you go. Art the underscore, underscore friends.co on IG. So if anybody here would like to participate in one of their figure drawing classes in the future, uh, when, when, when is the next one? Next Friday. Oh, next Friday, okay. Do we have a, you guys, do you have a sample of what a figure drawing looks like that you guys have done in the past? Yes, let me share it. Let's take a look. <laughs> just everybody here has an idea of what to expect, but just, and and you know everybody, we're you're all here to learn how to do figure drawing, so there's no right or wrong. You're learning, and that's a great way to practice. Okay, this is this is gonna be a fun merge because okay, it's a, the video that I made of of everybody's. Oh, yay, we get to see a video. Wow. Yeah, some are so detailed. Some are literally stick people, but they're still beautiful in their own right, you know? Oh, I love it. And there's different mediums people bring. They could bring pencil crayons. They can draw on their tablets. Yeah, wow. Great, great, great. I love it. So next, next Friday. So that's not okay. the same. Okay, to. next, next Friday. Okay, cool. All right. Well, this is, a, I know we're, we're towards the end of our program here. So um, oh, I just- Lynn? Yes. And who are, who do we, and next week we have another career day, right? Oh, yes. Next week we have our career day. Uh, we are going to be featuring careers in tech uh, with a guest speaker, or hopefully guest speakers from YouTube. So they'll be here to share uh, their you know, their background on how they got into the profession uh, at YouTube. All right. And then at the end of this month, we also have a pilot coming to talk about careers in aviation. So that should be, a, yeah, that should be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's been so much fun uh, being here with both uh, Roseanne and Rabbit. And I want to send a huge thank you for them for taking the time out of their day to share everything that they want, uh, that they want you to know uh, on how they can get into, uh, you know, the professions as filmmakers and as artists.